Hey, what's going on guys? Tim here again. In today's video, we're learning how to make a paracord coin pouch. Now, uh, this pouch can be used for uh, anything other than coins, of course, anything that you feel you can fit in there. Yeah, you can use that to carry. And uh, yeah, it's got a nice uh, button knot on it with an elastic loop, so it'll be nice and secure. So that's what we're doing today, guys. And remember, if you're looking for where to get paracord, feel free to check out those affiliate links in the description down below. That being said, let's get into the tutorial. So for this first step, we are going to gut our paracord. So clip off both ends of your first piece of paracord and take out all those inner guts. Now you can do this with gut with, uh, sorry, regular paracord, but um, it will be a little different. The profile will be a lot thicker. I want this coin pouch to be nice and thin, so I am gutting my cord. So once you've yanked out all those inner guts, uh, make sure you melt that end so it doesn't fray and just uh, close it off. And of course, you're gonna do this with both sets of paracord so again cut off clip off both ends of the cord and then pull out the inner guts so now with that gutted cord we're actually going to soak it in water and uh, because we want to flatten this cord like we did before with the um, hair straightener but by soaking this cord in the water we're going to prevent it from melting and a uh, you know a clever subscriber of mine did mention this in a comment so thank you to you for mentioning that but uh, yeah just soak it in a bit of water and then squeeze out the excess water and um, then we can move on to the next step and do this of course for both sets of cords so yeah again get that second cord in the water just let it soak for a few seconds and then squeeze out any excess water next we're going to use a hair straightener to iron that cord flat and it does work a lot better with that damp cord uh, if you don't have a hair straightener you can use an iron um, again just make sure you're uh, either your hair straightener or your um, iron isn't set too high because uh, you don't want to melt that cord. And that shouldn't be a problem because we have dampened our cord and that will prevent it from melting and it will also help it uh, get nice and flat. So do that for both sets of cords. And for this next step, you're going to need a wooden board or piece of wood. You could use cardboard if you want, but I think wood will be about much more sturdy and stable. So what I've done is I have marked out a square that is about 8.75 inches by 3.5 inches and where that's 22 centimeters by 9 centimeters approximately. And I've got nine uh, markings on both sides on the widths. And what I'm going to do is drive a nail into each of those markings. So I started in the middle and worked my way out. So I had one nail in the middle and four on both sides. Now, I did make a slight mistake. I should have offset them. You'll see what I mean um, in the next step. But all I did was I nailed uh, nine finishing nails into each side, all right? And they're roughly about a centimeter or, you know, about a quarter inch apart. So now with that first uh, gutted cord, we're going to uh, hook it onto the top end and we're essentially going to go back and forth and weave it around those nails. So this is going to become kind of like a, I guess you know, like a jig for uh, our flattened cord for us to weave the pattern of the pouch. So as you can see, I'm started, I started in the middle and I'm just going to start weaving back and forth all the way uh, until I run out of cord. And also I didn't end up using um, all nine of the nails. So I got to about the end, but you know, it doesn't really matter if you have an extra nail. So when I got to the end there, all I'm gonna do now is just tie it, tie a simple overhand knot to anchor that cord um, against the last nail there. And once that is done, you can move on to the other side and you can do the exact same thing. So now with the other end of the cord, I'm going to go back and forth. Now you can see what um, the mistake I did here. I should have offset the nails. So you can see how I didn't use that nail in the middle because of just of the way of the pattern of the going back and forth. It's not a big deal. It'll still work out. But I think if you want it to be a bit, you know, more neater, I guess, and you don't want that gap in the middle, you can offset your nails so that uh, they're not perfectly lined up. But again, I'm just doing the exact same thing. I'm running the cord back and forth and hooking it onto the nails. 
until I run out of cord. And again, I'm gonna end up on the bottom nail, on the outside nail, and I'm just going to anchor it to the last nail with a simple overhand knot. And now that both cords are anchored down, uh, we can start weaving the other cord on. So with the other flattened cord, I'm going to, uh, I actually will end up using that outer nail. So I'm gonna just tie a simple overhand knot there. I'm starting on the right side and uh, I'm gonna attach my fid to the other end of the cord. You can probably guess where we're going with this. So now we're gonna start that same um, over under weaving pattern that we've done in previous projects like the paracord wallets. And yeah, you're gonna start and just go over under over under um, from one end so this in this case from the right side to the left side so just work that flattened cord going over and under from the right to the left and once you get to the other side pull all of that cord of course all the way through through to the other side and again watch out for you know twists and tangles you want it laying nice and flat so if you get any you know, twists make sure you untwist it before you pull it all the way through and once you've got it laying nice and flat um, just push that cord all the way to the top so I find it helps a little bit if you just hold down that um, hold down that jig with your hand and just take a fid or something my knotter's tool and I just push it all the way to the top and once you've done that you're gonna go back the way you came right so uh, just make sure you do the opposite so you're weaving opposite of the um, first strand so I started by going over the first cord and then over under over under all the way from the left to the right And again, once you get that cord through, make sure it's laying nice and flat. Pull it all the way to the other side. Don't pull too hard to the point where it kind of deforms everything, but just give it just enough tension so that it's laying flat. And then you, of course, again, push all that cord all the way up to the top to give you that start of that nice um, sort of woven texture, all right? And from there, you're just gonna continue this pattern um, going all the way down to the bottom of your jig. So yep, just continue that back and forth over under pattern and make your way down. And as you get closer to the end, um, the cords might get a little tight. So again, I'm using the kind of uh, knotter's tool and fid technique. So I'm just using that knotter's tool to kind of pull up on the cords. And then um, I use that to get my over under pattern all the way through. So yeah, make it go um, all the way, as far as you can, all the way down to the bottom. Now coming down to the very, very bottom, uh, what I did was I put my hand underneath everything and I kind of lifted everything up because it's on those nails. So that made it a lot easier to get the last couple of passes through because I was able to just have a bit of clearance underneath my uh, jig there, right? So just, you can lift up on that cord if you want and just push it up to the top. It'll make it a lot easier. So now that I've gone down to the bottom, I'm going to remove my nails actually. I'm gonna take those finishing nails out. I don't really need them anymore. And I've probably got one pass left. I'm also going to remove that last nail, um, hold anchoring the other gray cord down. So you could take that off and lift up the, the whole thing off the uh, jig. 
Also, you can undo that other overhand knot on the other side and just have everything laying nice and flat. Now we've, we've got enough space to do one last pass and um, you know, the edge of this sort of uh, this woven piece here, it came out all right. You can see by, you know, the way the loops are, um, it's not to figure out a different way to do that. So the edges aren't super clean on this one, but uh, I think for a future project using the same type of method, we can remedy that because as you can see, they don't sit super nice like they did on the wallet. Um, but yeah, I think it's just the way I'm going to, I'm going to have to hook the cord onto the nails. Um, but if you guys are watching this, perhaps you can find out um, something different or try something different. So yeah, just take that last cord and just go over, under or back and forth through those end loops and bring it to the other side. All right, now that we've gotten that done, we can clip off all the excess cord. So I'm just gonna snip and melt the uh, first gray cord there. That one is fine. I'm just going to snip and melt it and just add a dab of super glue. It doesn't really need it, but I'm just taking out that you know bit of insurance so it doesn't come undone. And next on the other side, I've got you know a couple cords coming out this way as well. I'm just gonna clip off the excess and again, melt it and press it down with the knotter's tool and add a little dab of super glue just to be safe. And for this last side, I've got two cords going um, across each other. So I'm just gonna clip off the excess on both sides. And um, before I melt, I'm just gonna add just a Again, a dab of super glue, um, just to kind of fuse those two cords together and keep that corner, try to keep it as nice and clean as possible. So yeah, just press that together. And then of course, again, I'm just gonna touch it lightly with the uh, lighter. So next we're going to add the elastic cord that's going to be kind of like the loop closure and I'm just looking for the kind of midpoint of the upper flap for the, uh, the pouch. So I'm going to go underneath the gray cords and you, can, you know, you can kind of go over under whichever cords you think, um, you know, are most fitting. And then I'm going to pull most of that through and then now I'm going to go back the way I came uh, on the next row next to that. Again, I'm going under the gray cords just pull that or sorry feed that through and this is going to make that loop so i'm going under about three kind of woven um, pieces there so again get that elastic cord through and you're just going to make a loop just big enough for the diamond knot you don't want it um, too big or too small you want it just uh, enough so that it'll fit snugly over the diamond knot I do have a bit of excess elastic cord there. So again, I'm going to clip it and I'm not going to melt it too much because there is, you know, rubber in there. I'm just going to melt it slightly. And again, I'm going to go back to the super glue just to ensure that that doesn't, um, that elastic cord doesn't get pulled out. So again, just a couple little drops of super glue on both ends of the elastic cord. Now, next we're going to add the diamond knot. That's going to be like the uh, sort of anchor for that uh, loop and knot closure. So I'm going to place it right there, right underneath where that loop is. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And right there is where I want to go in. So I'm going to put my cord on my fid and push that through the middle. And yeah, we're going to get the cord through the middle and I'm going to come back kind of the way I came just maybe one little section over. So I have both strands coming out the middle there. And make sure both uh, sides of the cord are even. Next, we're going to tie the diamond knot 
So overhand loop on the right side, place it over the left. And then now you've got that little kind of eye looking thing. Take the cord on the bottom on the left side, bring it underneath the cord on the right. Go over, under, and over those uh, three cords there, making our care expend. And then of course you're gonna take the cord on the right hand side, bring it up past the cord up top, and then put it behind and through the loop in the middle. So we'll go past that cord through the middle you do the same on the bottom cord goes past the opposite cord on the other side and through the middle then gather both cords and give it a little tug and of course you're gonna to have to adjust this knot I want that knot sitting all the way um, right up against the pouch there so you don't have to tighten it too much just yet but uh, get that knot semi uh, together and then you can feed that excess through the knot to get get the knot nice and flush against the pouch now once that knot is nice and flush i'm going to clip off the excess cord and i'm just going to take my lighter to it and then just melt it and press down on it with the knotter's tool. Now we're going to close off the sides of the pouch. I've got my micro cord on my type one FID and I've got those gray loops on the side. That's what we're looking at here. And now we're going to anchor our cord. So I'm gonna go under about, let's see, one, two, three, about four or five of those loops. And as you can see earlier, I've already kind of started to form my pouch. I've just kind of eyeballed it into the shape I want. So get that micro cord underneath about five of those uh, loops on the side, and you're gonna push it through. I guess we'll go under six, just to make it extra secure. But yeah, pull that cord through, not all the way through, just enough so that um, it kind of stays like the length of your pouch on the bottom there. And then of course, I'm gonna go back to my super glue and I'm just going to anchor that micro cord there. It's probably not gonna come out without the glue, but again, you know, I've got the glue here already, I might as well. The glue doesn't show at all either, so I think it's fine just to, again, use a little drop of super glue again to make sure that micro cord doesn't come out. So now we've got that cord coming out the top. And now we can start closing off the side of that pouch. So what I'm gonna start doing now is I'm gonna go um, through, I guess you can call it the top layer. I'm gonna go through the gray here. I apologize for my camera not being in focus for a second there, but go through that top loop and go back the way you came. So you're kind of like just drawing, uh, doing loops through the uh, both layers to kind of connect them together. So again, now I'm going through the bottom here. And again, make sure you don't pierce your paracord. So I went through the top, now I'm going through the bottom. See how that made a circle? And now I'm actually from there, gonna go through the top again, so I end, out, end up uh, on the top side. That way you can kind of tighten it, and it gives it a bit of tension. So once you've done that, you're at the top again, you can go through the top loop again and just repeat that process and go all the way down the side of your pouch. All right, so see, I went through the top. Now I'm gonna go through the bottom again. I'm gonna turn it around and make that circle. So it's kind of like you're just doing these loops through the top and bottom and that's gonna close off the side of the pouch. So now once we've got to the bottom, my cord was a little short, but uh, based on the measurements I've given you guys, you shouldn't have a problem. I'm using my hemostats here just to get the last little bit of cord through. And I'm gonna have to start shooting on fixed focus because of this uh, blurriness. But anyhow, you got that cord going through the bottom. And of course you can see where we're going. We're just gonna snip off that cord, that excess micro cord, and then just uh, melt it a little bit. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere, so I don't think, uh, 
You could, again, put super glue on the bottom corner here, but I don't think it's gonna come out. Um, so yeah, just clip it off and I'm just gonna take my lighter to it and melt it. So now that we've done one side, we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Um, it will be a little different because the gray um, stitches won't be uh, perfectly lined up because again, it's like that basket weave texture. So um, it will be a little offset, but uh, it's still manageable. So just do the same thing, anchor that micro cord on one side and you know, get it all the way through and repeat the exact same process of anchoring the cord, um, going up top and then doing those same loops to uh, close off the other side. So again, I've gotten down to the very bottom here and I'm going to snip and singe the excess cord. And we're just about done, one last little thing to do. So what I did was I just took my knotter's tool and I pushed in that melted ends of the diamond knot um, because I didn't like it sticking out there, it was a little bit ugly. I mean, if you have black paracord, um, you can probably just color it in with a marker or something like that. But um, yeah, you can just push that in so that the melted end is nice and hidden. All right, guys, there we have it. We are done. There is the paracord coin pouch, or I guess you can call it a multi-purpose pouch. You can put your coins in there, or I like to put some of my, you know, Beglary and knuckle bone skill toys in there, whatever you want, uh, whatever that'll fit, that is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And remember, guys, I do run a Patreon page to support this channel, and I do make exclusive tutorials every month uh, for uh, the Patreon supporters, so feel free to check out that uh, link for that page down below as well as in the video if you'd like to um, see what I have to offer on Patreon. All right, and again, again, a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters, you know, both past and present. You guys are making a huge difference for me and I really, really appreciate the support. All right, so I hope you guys like this one. Hope you'll try it out. I know it's a lot of a uh, bit more effort on this one, but at the end, I think it's worth it. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.